So in this example, we're gonna cover recovering your fidget from an operating unit. This will be an overcharged system. In other words, with the TXV, we have too high of a subcooling. With a fixed over metering device, we have too low of superheated vapor. So we need to recover some refrigerant out. And we can't just vent that refrigerant, we have to put it into a recovery tank. And for this example, we're gonna start out with the app. So work this along with me, pull out your app, HVAC school app. We're gonna go to tools, then we're gonna go to recovery. The very top number where it says tank weight, we're gonna look on the side of our tank. And the TW, the tear weight or tank weight is 16 pounds even. So we're gonna put in here 16 pounds. The next question says tank water capacity, WC. So look at my tank and the water capacity is 26.2. So we're gonna enter that number in. Maximum temperature, we'll leave that at 130, that's standard. And then refrigerant type, we're going to select R22. That'll be the refrigerant we're pulling out. So we're gonna hit calculate. And it says that our maximum tank and contents, the maximum this should ever weigh is 38.27 pounds and it can hold a maximum of 22.27 pounds of refrigerant inside of it. So I got my scale, I'm gonna zero my scale out. I take my tank and I put my tank on the scale and I wanna know what my complete total is. So I'm gonna see what my total tank weight is and that number should be below what the total tank and capacity is. If this number on my scale is gonna be lower than this number on my app, I know that I have room still available inside my recovery tank. And if there's room still available, that means we have room to put that refrigerant in there. I can subtract those two numbers and know how much room is left. For example, if I only have two pounds left to put in, I know I need to be very careful don't exceed that. Or maybe I have a capacity left of five pounds or 10 pounds or however much is left. In this scenario, we're gonna be good. I wanna keep in my mind whatever this maximum number is. There's two ways to proceed. I can simply write down what my starting weight was and then write down what my ending weight was. Subtract the two numbers and that's how much refrigerant I put into this tank. By doing it that way, I can make sure my tank and the contents that my scale is showing never exceeds the tank and content capacity that my app says. And I know that I'm never overfilling it. The other way to do it is after we hook our hoses up, we could press the tear or zero button and it's simply going to give us the difference of how much refrigerant we're putting in. Either way, we wanna make sure that we do not overfill our tank. So we already have our hoses hooked up, they're already purged, we already did superheat and subcooling, we know that we're overcharged, we're gonna remove some refrigerant. So we're gonna to need to use this middle hose. And we got a few different options. Here I have my manual low loss fitting. So I can open and close this so I can purge it in this direction. So what I can do with this is leave it loose on my tank. For this example, it doesn't really matter which side we connect it to. I'm gonna connect it to the one that says vapor. Remember, you don't go by color. We actually go by what it says. So it says vapor. I'm gonna leave this loose. I'm gonna go ahead and open this valve up. And then what I can do is open my low pressure valve on my manifold gauge set. The low pressure refrigerant is going to flow into my manifold gauge set, across that valve, into the yellow hose, and push that low pressure vapor is going to push the contaminants and some of that moisture out of this hose. As refrigerant is purging or leaking at this connection, I can go ahead and tighten this connection all the way up, and now I've purged that center hose. Now that my hose is purged, I make sure I close this valve back off because I don't need that open at all. Now my system's running, and I say I have 200 psi on the high side and 68 psi on the low side about an 80 degree day, so my tank pressure is gonna be at 143. The system's overcharged, there's too much refrigerant. So we're gonna take refrigerant out of the system and put it into this recovery tank. So what we're gonna do is open up this valve. By opening up this valve, I've now connected the tank to this yellow hose. The next thing I wanna do is take refrigerant out of the system. So I gotta be careful. If I open, even by accident, the low pressure side, it's gonna take refrigerant out of the tank and put it into this unit. So I wanna be careful I don't do that. I do not wanna take refrigerant out of this tank and put it in the unit. I do not want contaminations. I may have other people's refrigerant in there that we cannot put back into the system. So what we're going to do is open up the high side and this is gonna be the high pressure liquid port. Remember that compressor's building that high pressure. So here we're at 200 PSI gauge. So when I open this valve, it connects the high side or red hose to the center manifold and to that yellow hose. So the compressor is gonna be pumping this liquid refrigerant out of the unit and literally be pumping it into this tank. And it happens very, very fast. So you don't have to throttle it in because there's nothing to protect. However, I still recommend throttling it in because it's very easy to take too much refrigerant out. We're talking about liquid refrigerant being pumped by the compressor, the vapor pump, pumping that liquid refrigerant into this tank. 
Remember, it's after the condensing coil, so it is liquid form, but it's still high pressure. We're pushing that liquid into this tank. So you can very quickly take out a whole lot of refrigerant. So I'm just trying to take a little bit of refrigerant out to drop my subcooling or raise my superheat. In that case, I want to just take a little bit out at a time, keep watching my scale, see how much refrigerant I'm taking out of the system, because it's very easy to take too much out. Once you get done, you simply close this valve off here, close this valve off here, and you're ready to disassemble your hoses. Now, many times what will happen is you will accidentally take too much refrigerant out of that system. Well, we only needed to take a little bit out. We took too much out. Now our subcooling is too low or our superheat is too high. So we've taken too much refrigerant out. We got to put refrigerant back in. A mistake that a lot of new techs make is they start to open the suction valve and just take it from the tank and put it right back into the unit. We really don't want to do that because if we have different customers refrigerant in here, that means that we'd be contaminating the system. We don't know the condition of all the other customers refrigerant that we worked on and we don't want to take and risk putting that refrigerant back into the system. So what we have to then do is close off this valve, make sure both of these valves are closed off. We're going to close this little ball valve right here. Take this valve off. We're going to take our tank off. We'll then have to re-zero our scale. We then have to hook our hose up to our new tank of refrigerant. And now already have a little bit of vapor refrigerant here. So just by opening this valve, it'll be just enough refrigerant coming through that I can purge that last little bit of the connection, tighten this up, leave this open, open this valve, turn the tank upside down, zero out my scale, and now I can start adding refrigerant to the system. And if we remember, we're gonna add refrigerant through the suction side. So when I open this valve, liquid refrigerant is gonna flow out of the tank, through this yellow hose, across the manifold, through our service valve, into our blue hose, then through our Schrader port and into the system. And we open and close just like before, giving it little shots of refrigerant, so we have time for that refrigerant to change state from liquid to vapor before it gets to that compressor. And we simply add refrigerant until our subcooling goes up to the point where we need, or our superheat drops down to the point where we need. And it's very possible that you will accidentally overcharge the system. So our subcooling is now too high and our superheat's too low. That's why it's important to make sure you take your time when you're charging. Give it time for the see the results. So I overcharged the system, no big deal. I close this ball valve off. I take my hose loose from my tank, re-zero my scale again, put my recovery tank back on. I already have refrigerant in this hose. All I have to do now is thread this hose onto the vapor port. Before I completely tighten it, I open this valve, let that little bit of pressure in here purge out just from that short piece of connection, tighten my hose up, open this valve up, and now I'm ready to recover refrigerant. And we do the same thing again. We just simply open and close that valve just a little bit, take a little bit of refrigerant out, give it time, wait, wait a few minutes to let the refrigerant balance out, check our superheat and our subcooling again. And you just keep this process going until you get it right on point. Now, eventually you're gonna to get to where you can add refrigerant or recover refrigerant and you're gonna get it spot on the first time. But the first time that you're starting out doing this, it's okay if you're not right on the money. It's okay if it takes you a few times. I remember when I first started out, I would have to switch tanks constantly. It was very aggravated. And then I realized if I just take a little bit of extra time if I'm recovering or spend that little bit of extra time waiting when I'm charging it, I don't have to keep switching tanks. And overall, it's a big time saver spending a little bit more time charging and less time having to switch between the tanks. Now it does get a little bit more complicated when using an automatic low loss fitting because we can't purge and we can't control this valve like we do here. So that's a very easy way using the manual ball valve low loss fittings. It gives us a lot of control. So I'm done with this system. I got my superheat and subcooling where I want it. I can close this valve off, close my tank off, take my hose off. I am done with this tank and I can continue to take my gauges off just like we talked about before. But let's talk about another scenario. What if you don't have these automatic low loss fittings? What are your other options? Let's talk about that now. There's multiple ways of doing it with this low loss fitting. One way is we're just gonna hook it up like normal. And for this scenario, we already have refrigerant in this tank. So what I'm gonna do is hook my low loss fitting up to the side that says vapor. I screw my automatic low loss fitting on and I loosen the yellow hose at my manifold gauge set. Now what I'm gonna do is open my tank, crack my tank open, and let the vapor come out of the tank, push through this yellow service hose, and start leaking right here at the manifold gauge set, or purging the contaminants out. So I open this valve, refrigerant flows through this point, and then I go ahead and tighten this the rest of the way up. Notice that we had to purge it that direction. Because I have the low loss fitting, I cannot purge it in this direction. So that's one way to do it. 
Then if we end up with the scenario that we took too much refrigerant out and we have to switch, we simply close this valve entirely off. We take our automatic low loss fitting connection loose and it's gonna hold the refrigerant in this hose. Then I'm gonna take my new tank of refrigerant and since the refrigerant's already held in this hose, all I have to do is screw it right onto my tank, open my tank up, turn my tank upside down, and now we're ready to go. So that's one example using a low loss fitting. But let's start over. So what if I had a brand new or a fresh recovery cylinder? These are under a vacuum. So the problem is they were under vacuum and I tried to do the same exact method with no refrigerant here at all, it'd be below atmospheric pressure. So if I was to leave this connection loose here and tighten it up there and open the valve, it would actually be pulling in. The atmospheric pressure would be going into the hose and we'd be contaminating the tank. So if this tank is a brand new recovery tank and I do not have, and all I have is this low loss fitting, what we'll have to do is something a little bit different. What we're gonna do then is turn our hose around. We're gonna put this connection from the manifold gauge set on our tank and leave this connection loose here. Then what we'll do is take the automatic low loss fitting and attach it to the manifold gauge set. And on this fitting, we're gonna tighten it up all the way. Now by doing it this way, I can open up my suction port. Now the low pressure vapor flows across a manifold gauge set, it flows into this yellow hose, and now it's leaking or purging out at this connection right here. So the refrigerant's flowing in this direction, and then I can simply tighten this connection all the way up, close this valve off. Then when I open my tank up, that little bit of vapor refrigerant will flow into the tank and no contaminants will flow into the tank. Now I'm ready to recover refrigerant from the system, I simply open the liquid port. Then the high pressure is gonna flow up from the liquid line across the manifold gauge set through this hose and flow into that tank. Because the tank is in a vacuum, that refrigerant will flow out very, very fast. So if you have an automatic low loss fitting on these recovery tanks, there's a couple different things you have to take into account. If it's a brand new tank, you have to hook the hose up backwards so that you're able to purge refrigerant from the unit. If you have refrigerant already in this tank, you can hook the hose up like normal and purge it at the manifold gauge set. Now it sounds complex, all these what ifs, what ifs, but if you simply think that you cannot purge out of a low loss connection, it allows you to solve that problem. I can purge through this side because there is no loss fitting. Hopefully that doesn't make it too confusing, but we still have one more scenario left. 